So, uh, thank you for coming here and making it here so far. Okay, this is not turning. Okay, until they fix it. Um, we do have a busy agenda for this breakout session as well. Um, so we, uh, we would start with an Amdocs um, presentation that they will walk us through um, their technical solutions. Oops. Okay. Yeah. So we will start with, uh, with the um, presentation. And then we have two panels. The first panel is the Eminos approach towards network management and, uh, and automation. This is a, a panel we would, ha would, would have all operators in. And then we would have the second panel from um, vendors is how to overcome challenges on, uh, on the SMO layer. And then we will conclude with a 10 minute um, uh, presentation from, uh, from uh, the Roma subgroup. So um, before, I'll, I'll call uh, Atul Kana from uh, Amdocs to, uh, to present. Thanks, Adil. Yeah, hi guys. Th thanks for staying here till the last session. Uh, I know most of you have flight uh, maybe later today or tomorrow morning itself. I won't uh, take most of your time, but I think, I, and I will try not to repeat what you have heard in last three days as well, uh, because I think Open RAN has been a center stage for all of us, and some of us has been associated uh, for m maybe a year, and for some of us, we have been associated for the last four or five years, right? Since its inception. Uh, just to introduce myself, I'm Etul Kahana. I'm with Amdocs. Uh, I'm focusing on the products and solution strategy uh, based in North America, uh, focusing on the ORAN specifically. Uh, just to brief intro of the Amdocs itself as well. So Amdocs has been uh, in the system integration services industry for last 30 plus years. Uh, working in the legacy world of uh, 2G, 3G, 4G, now working towards the 5G and ORAN division as well. Jumping into the slides itself, right? So, uh, so just, just go back to the roots again, right? So um, I know we all get uh, too trenched into the, all the issues and the challenges that we are facing, right? Uh, uh, why, how the interop is gonna work, how the solution is gonna work, right? But we need to kind of rewind back ourselves again and again to make sure why we started this journey, right? Why we are going towards the open and uh, disaggregation network, right? We were going there for the innovation purpose, right? That's what we wanted to achieve. We wanted to have a agile network in place. We want to have a programmable network in place. That's why we all started this journey. It's not a 3G to 4G or a 4G to 5G transition, network transition. It's a architecture, tran architecture transition itself, right? And the reason for the innovation is so that you get the best of the breed of the network itself, right? We all have heard like a CU, DU split, DU to CU within the split itself, the SMO split, the RIC panels, which was here uh, earlier today as well, right? Between the RIC and X app. So it's a multi-vendor approach, which brings the best of the breed. And what helps is, I heard in one of the panel as well, like uh, for, for, the, for the vendors, like uh, for the CSPs, they are relying on the Ericsson, the Nokias, if they want to add a feature. And the, the lead time has been, if, uh, if AT&T and Vodafone kind of have a same request, then it will be six months. Otherwise, it might be a year or year and a half or something like that, right? So what Oren brings to the table is, is bring that innovation in the forefront bring it to the center as well. And if uh, any of the CSP wants to build that automation, build an app, build that solution, very small solution, very small closed loop use case, they can do it themselves as well. It's a self-service enablement as well, right? To get it done, I don't know, in a week or a month time frame, but definitely reduce that year time frame into, into much, much less than maybe 10% or 5% of the time frame itself, right? And that what that leads to is obviously the time to market. Some of the new applications that can be done, the time to market for that is, like we mentioned earlier, it's almost a year or a six months if we cut it down to one month or a few weeks itself, right? So some of the feature testing that takes, uh, takes months and months 
and if we can shorter the time frame so the time to market is the greatest uh, i would say the innovation enabler for to switch towards or and write from a legacy network and then the other one is the performance so how come the performance of legacy and how do you compare it right so from a performance point of view from a legacy to a oran point of view so with oran with all the feature enablement with all the uh, all the apis all the e1 e2 interfaces the data that is enabled to us and the closed loop action that we can create from it we can definitely make it more customer oriented make it more beam farming slicing all those are possible with the new oran obviously this is all all innovation is good but i think to kind of pack it up together actually we all dismantled it now we are looking how do we pack it up together and packing is a, is becoming a becoming a very very big noise factor and has a lot of challenges as well and uh, obviously with the oran um, apis that are being standardized as we speak and it's, it's a, um, whether it's a e1 link or a e2 link or a a1 link so all those protocols that are being standardized how how do the how do all the oems kind of Uh, in i would say integrate those apis how do they expose the data and if you have a one du vendor and a one cu vendor how do they interop obviously the the expectation is a plug and play right but there's a lot of system integration challenges there's a lot of multi vendor interop testing which became a requirement all those things were happening behind the curtain of ericsson and nokia of the world earlier as well and the lead time was almost 6 month or a year when all of us got exposed to it i think kind of fell off the chair as well this is very complex very hard to do some of us are still struggling to kind of went past that stage as well and then overall network operations now we have uh, working with six or eight vendors how do you operationalize some of these activities how do you monitor some of these activities i think these are the i would say there are, has been so many reports and omedia has kind of published that report as well these are the top 3 challenges and if i rewind that same report 2 years back the the feature development the feature capabilities were some of the top list of uh, csps to move towards oran and now it is more of the system integration challenges multi vendor operability operability challenges which is going on as well and how and what is needed to kind of fix this i think there has been n number of solutions out there as well and kind of our focus is also on some of these activities being a system integrator and what we need as an overall ecosystem as a market as well how do we solve some of those challenges and i think i have only a couple of slides to kind of focus on that as well to have a multi vendor interop interoperability is somehow it's a very long word we need to kind of find a synonym for it as well so that it's easier to say on 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 the on this conversation as well but this is a, such an overused word and like uh, the why this has become so exposed to all of us right suddenly out of nowhere this interop testing and i think that coming back to the start again the agile software deployed network what that mean is agility means there's going to be a new software revisions there's going to be a new bios update there's going to be a five vendors coming up with their new releases at a different point of time how do you make sure all interop with each other uh, the legacy way is obviously not possible at all then it means it's going back to a one year model to develop a new feature so what you need is kind of uh, showcasing in the slide as well from a supplier to a production testing how do we shorten the time frame so there has to be an automated ci cd ct pipeline so which we have developed as well along with the collaboration the tip as well to kind of focus on that ci cd ct pipeline focusing on kind of make it modular to focus on like how do we kind of artif how do we take out the artifacts how do we set up an environment in a dynamic way how do we pre stage that environment how do we build the test cases how we run the test cases how do we deploy it in a production environment how do we test it before we roll it out and these are like uh, five and six steps which we have to combine shrink wrap together so that 1200 plus test cases can be run over and over again and the new features can be deployed uh, can be released uh, in a in a much more agile and a sooner way instead of a six month or a year time frame so the second challenge which we have heard in last 3 days is the network operations right so that's the biggest challenge everybody is assuming like an it kind of an environment which can be taken into a uh, taken into a um, i would say a network 
but what we see is obviously there's a there's a there's a big role play for an orchestrator which has to be an end to end not just a ran specific or a cudu or a transport point of view so we have a uh, so there's a need for an smo which overlays on all these network elements and um, and kind of help it function together so that whenever there's a network slicing requirement anything of that sort that can be done in a single shot way as well and there has been announcement as of yesterday as well so we have been working with vodafone where uh, we are kind of deploying and in the progress for the poc for the same as well and the second part on the network operation is the automation itself right the direct accepts the energy savings the coverage and capacity optimization how do you build all these automations in a framework which is easy to deploy and get the savings out of it get the savings from your network as well compared to your legacy network so how do you optimize that and how do you make it open and vendor neutral as well so i think that's that's another approach that's another ran automation which is need for to kind of streamline some of these operations as well and i'll quickly move to the last slide itself what what amdocs is doing in this space as well right from an innovation point of view the ci cd ct so we have uh, all thanks to the tip as well we already got our bronze badge for our uh, certified within the tip itself for our ci cd ct pipeline which we have it deployed in some of the csps as well kind of uh, working according to the tip standard as well which is kind of commercially available as well to kind of streamline some of these processes and the other one is a system integrator we have been certified as a tip uh, system integrator as well a uh, couple of years back we have been collaborating with tip uh, since its inception as well kind of following the guidelines building the ecosystem and partnering with the ecosystem partner as well and then moving to the right side from our automations to kind of bring the efficiencies as well right so we have been working on the we have been coming from a ran background building the orchestration layer which is more end to end so that like i mentioned it's in the word of phones we are con- kind of already deploying a poc as well and the ran automations thanks to tip for the ARI 5G and Arian as well so kind of working in that space too thanks to abdul for pushing me out for this one as well thank you guys thank you atul and i didn't push anyone out well this is the time i know it's tight but thank you for the in- insights um now we have the first panel which is the uh, mno's approach towards network management and automation that would be moderated by Renul Caballero. So may I ask uh, the moderator and the panelists to come to the stage. Abdul and thank you everyone I know this is again last session and an important topic so thanks for sticking here and let's get started let's not take up any more time uh, what I would do here is to have our great panelists introduce themselves one by one and at the same time take up the first question this is about um, the service automation and orchestration so let's talk with the basic question of why we think it's or do we think it's a necessity for the open ran type of networks and for disaggregated solutions so we can um, start with matty you thank you <coughs> thank you so i'm matty hilton and from at and uh, i've been in three panels today so maybe you've seen me introduce myself a few times but i wanted to say something different this time so before i worked on oran i actually worked on onap this is open network automation platform and this kind of ties in with this panel because onap has been used internally in AT&T for network automation and now with smo coming into the picture the thinking is okay to be port the onap apps into smo but uh, the point uh, i want to make here is that even with the traditional network we need automation so I would say that it's given that with the disaggregated network we need automation even more because the complexity there's more interfaces O2 uh, there's the ability for uh, R apps to deploy X apps so it's the complexity it's just growing and the possibilities are growing and also the 
capabilities of the platform are going to be superior and of course standardized compared to what we have in the current Sun automation platforms. Yeah, so outside of e, Orange Innovation in charge of radio innovation and, um, and also environment innovation. Um, so uh, actually uh, our vision about SMO for Open RAN is that um, indeed a full SMO uh, would be desirable and um, to, to operate and run the Open RAN network, the disaggregated network. But today the ecosystem is not that much ready to, to support all of the open interfaces and also the, the, the target which is a multi-domain SMO fully open and standardized uh, and multi-vendor of course. So we think that uh, even if the full SMO is not yet there, uh, we can take a, a kind of step-by-step -step approach, starting with some of the prime, I mean, with the SMO, with supporting some of the prime functionalities uh, related to uh, lifecycle management and automated deployment. Um, we, can, we can mention, let's say, uh, configuration man management of the network, uh, integration and commissioning to speed up deployment, a CI CD chain, uh, and, and also an automated software upgrade with the capability of, uh, uh, to have a quick rollback if, if there is any failure. So these prime functions are, are um, necessary from the beginning uh, to be supported by the SMO. Uh, and of course, uh, then uh, gradually we can consider, um, let's say, enhance it with non-real-time rig, with NSSMF for slicing management, and at a later stage, um, uh, multi, uh, having a multi-domain SMO covering different different domains, RAN, core, and then transport. Um, yeah, that's I <laughs> I stop here and. <laughs> okay, so hi everyone. My name is Veronica de Alba. I work in Vodafone as a specialist open RAN engineer. And uh, well, we consider that the SMO is essential for this uh, disaggregated and multi-vendor run environment. Um, as all of you know, disaggregated networks are designed to break down the traditional monolithic uh, network elements into individual and interoperable components. And the SMO is able to manage this complexity, you know, providing um, a centralized platform for configuring, provisioning, and, and maintaining those components across the, the network, no, no matter how different they are. Uh, the SMO is able um, to manage manually and automatically uh, resources based on, on service requirements and, and network conditions. Mm -hmm. It can trigger alarms, perform, diagno um, perform diagnostics, and even take corrective um, actions no, to, uh, when, when a problem is detected. Um, it can, we can use the auto-healing capabilities or even more advanced analytical techniques as IML. So with all of these features, we can obtain a much more efficient resources utilization and, and, and service improvement. Mm -hmm. okay. Hi, uh, this is Beatriz Gonzalez from Telefonica, from the Telefonica Corporation. Uh, I'm working in the um, uh, operations transformation team, uh, focused in the RAN radio access domain. I'm, I'm from operations, so I'm going to say very obvious and very practical things probably. Uh, it's true what all of you have said. The, for us, the SMO is, is very important. It's a key piece for the open run success because uh, we are moving from the known simple, more or less, uh, technologies to a more or very more complex uh, new open disaggregated network. So we need a, an element there to act as a brain, to interconnect all the pieces mm -hmm. and uh, doing what we need it to do, to orchestrate all these pieces and do it in an automatic way, uh, providing more efficient, more agile, mm, reducing the impact in the customer's experience, for example, and, and also managing. I mean, SMO is service management orchestration, orchestrate and manage the, the services, uh, the manage the full life cycle of the network functions uh, in the proper way to to make it work and without any any issue hopefully so that's uh, for me it's completely necessary and, and yeah. key part of the open run success i understand thank you and so to the next question we heard from atul the progress that is being made and what is happening in roma i think most of you are following the project group as well so why not ask our mno partners now on what opportunities do you see 
in terms of um, the automation and orchestration phase of the network. And I would start with you, Matty. Well, <coughs> uh, opportunities. Well, like I said before, all the automation that we have already in the network. Mm -hmm. um, uh, for example, I just recently heard our operations folk tell about how the SON platform was instrumental in keeping the network running when we had a big storm in New Jersey. And that was years ago. So this kind of automation has already been there. And, and uh, it's only going to be more needed. But uh, the current automation platforms have limitations on how quickly they get data and how quickly they can push control. So the fact that hopefully with SMO and non-real-time rec we can get into the seconds, that basically just blows up the possibilities of what you can do. Maybe Veronica, you want to comment on that as well? Yes, sir. Um, well, we consider that run automation is essential to, to simplify the operation of these uh, run environments where the well, different layers are often provided by different vendors. Uh, it can also help us with those time-consuming uh, network uh, configuration and management tasks. And thanks to the automation tools, we can enable well, auto healing capabilities, for example, not to, to uh, automatically identify and, and solve common issues without human intervention and, and improving the, the network reliability. To give you some examples with auto healing, for example, if we have some kind of issue in the bare metal layer, thanks mm -hmm. to the hardware software disaggregator, uh, we can move the software to another hardware, uh, available hardware. Or even if uh, we think in another kind of auto healing, uh, if we have some kind of issue on a site, we can reconfigure at real time the parameters of NERVI sites to have the, the, the best possible network with the available resources. So there are a lot of use cases where the automation uh, can give us benefits. And another um, example I think that is really important is the network, uh, the network optimization. Uh, a basic example is the the uh, neighbor definitions no, to, to ensure the, the cell handover. This is a well-known process that this is already automated by the operators that have a, a son. But this is a still a process that it is necessary to review manually. So mm -hmm. we can introduce um, this machine learning or data analytics capabilities no, to gain insights the network performance and customer behavior. Mm -hmm and even to make a smarter uh, an automatic data decision driven uh, for the network uh, optimization and service service improvement. Understood. And, and I think we can all relate to it. When we started OpenRAN a few years back, I would say a couple years back, maybe more, uh, it was always a question of let's not touch the SMO part of it yet. Let's talk about the disaggregation of other components. That SMO is complex. So now I think the time has come where everybody kind of understands the criticality and importance. So then let's get to the part of what is complex, what challenges do we see, and how do we get to those? So maybe Atusa, you can comment on that part. Yeah, actually, one of the challenges that we see is that still the specification is ongoing for several open interfaces. Um, uh, there's still some work to be done on 01, 02, A1, for example. And, um, and we need some detailed specification for, uh, for APIs for, and also the data format for the script format that needs to be um, agreed by the ecosystem. And also the ecosystem to become open and, I mean, adopted this, this openness of SMO by, by the by different stakeholders. Um, and um, and as, as we are not there yet, we need to figure out some intermediate steps for, uh, for um, uh, let's say, deploying SMO in uh, for our solutions, and um, for example, uh, one example that I can uh, that I can give is the fact that uh, today we, mm, for the management of uh, of some of the RAN network functions, we see that um, as as open interfaces are not yet supported, uh, we need to consider a kind of a third party EMS which uh, which needs to interact with the SMO. So we don't have a one layer SMO. We need to consider several layers, and uh, this is probably could be considered as an intermediate solution uh, to start mm -hmm. with, but hopefully in the coming years uh, with, with the openness, uh, with, with the full openness, we could, um, we could bypass this intermediate, uh, let's say, block and, and have, a, uh, have a one SMO that take care of uh, the management of the network functions. Yeah, 
one of them all. <coughs> and, and I liked how, Bia, you mentioned that that's the brain. So maybe you can also comment on what challenges you see uh, from an operational perspective too. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, uh, what I expect for, for Open Run is to, to count on a product. So the main challenges that I see there, or one of the main challenges is uh, interoperability among the, the different pieces of the, of the product itself also. Uh, also the end-to-end the -end performance. I always hear my radio access colleagues asking about performance, and that's for sure it's necessary to count on the same level of performance as the, the traditional run we have now. <coughs> that would be maybe the two uh, first challenges also um, we need, uh, as, as it is disaggregated and is it a, a bundle of different components, it's, it's crucial also uh, to uh, being able to isolate very well the issues. I mean, I need to know exactly where the, the issue is, in which component to, to solve it uh, as fast as, as possible, okay? And, well, orchestrating is also, a, well, it's not a challenge, it's, uh, it's something we, <laughs> we have there, okay? So I would say that more or less these are the, the main challenges. Well, one, one more I would like to add is uh, thinking on one, once I have the network deployed and I want to update with new features, for example, I think that's another challenge to do it in a, in a, in a fast way because we have to, I suppose we are going to change very fast from one uh, version to another, so we need to update very quickly and also to have a rollback procedure working well as well. So that would be my my thought, I would say. <laughs> I could add one more point from the morning panel. Mm -hmm. In the morning panel, we were talking about the conflict between X apps, but this same would apply in the SMO, especially if we start getting R apps, hopefully we'll be getting R apps from multiple vendors, mm -hmm. how to make sure that they, the combination actually works as expected and you don't get any emergent behavior that you didn't expect. And of course, this also applies to any software updates of the or apps you have to kind of continuously keep on testing to make sure that nothing undesirable interaction happens. Okay, so maybe I, uh, let me extend on that part and, and ask you the follow-up question on it. Do you see a role for say AIML to play in this particular area and how do you see it kind of evolving with AIML? Well, AIML is already Big, it has a big role in, in even our current RAN, like in, uh, in our SON optimization, we are already using AI ML. Loaded term. Um, yeah, yes. yeah, but it's, it's going to be even more, more essential because RAN is very complex. There's somebody mentioned how many parameters there are and how many metrics there are. It's kind of almost unmanageable for humans. So typically the RAN now is configured with some golden configuration that maybe market decides. And, and but, well, what we have done, actually, we've, we've worked a little bit on AI ML in, I would call it app, I wouldn't call it R app or X app, but we were looking at um, could we improve the throughput and spectral efficiency by modifying some of the mobility, idle mode, and connected mode parameters uh, based on basically the current load, so we would observe the neighboring cells and tweak the parameters. So we found out that that we can improve uh, by just using a deterministic algorithm. But of course, the deterministic algorithm is pretty simple. It just has some if-then-else if statements. If the load difference between neighboring cells is greater than this, mm -hmm. tweak the parameter to drive some traffic. And these parameters are cell-level parameters, so you don't actually know how many users will get moved. But then what we did is we took the data where we actually looked at changes, looked at the impact, and trained a machine learning model on this. And what we found, and I think it's not surprising, even if you are kind of naive in machine learning, it performed better than this uh, deterministic algorithm. And basically, by using the data, you can learn, like for this cell pair, at this time of the day, uh, it makes uh, changing this parameter this much typically makes this much of a positive effect or, or negative effect. Because the cell pairs are pretty much unique, the characteristics, there may be buildings, uh, there may be distances different. So it makes sense that you kind of have to try and see what changes affect how. And, and considering the time of day and day of week as a feature, 
in the machine learning model is important because the traffic is different. The users are going to work or staying at work, uh, being at home at certain times. So, so we found that machine learning really works well. Thank you, Matty. And we all kind of understand it now that how AI ML could be an unlimited resource to tap into as we go, not just in this field, but generally too. So maybe Bia, you have some uh, experience to share on that as you start on ex mm -hmm. experimenting or maybe yeah, implementing it in that yeah, direction. Yeah, we are doing we are doing some some uh, models with for prediction, for example. But mm -hmm. I think the, the the message I would like to say here regarding the machine learning and AI algorithms. For me, it's uh, what it brings is a completely different approach. I mean, uh, one thing in, we are in which we are working now is automation. But for me, uh, 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 artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, will let us go further to autonomy, which is, which is slightly different from automation. I mean, I can automate with uh, rules, more mm -hmm. complex, more simple. I can put RPAs, robots, whatever, but uh, uh, autonomy is uh, having a, a thinking on a self-learning network, learning by themselves, and I cannot do it only with auto with automation. I need autonomy, and that is what is bringing the artificial intelligence from my point of view. I don't know when we will be there, okay? But I think that that's what we are foreseeing in the future. Mm. Got it. Yeah, and and so continuing on on automation orchestration. So, Veronica, would you like to comment on the CI, CD, CT and the challenges we see in, in implementing it? Because, again, it, it's something that is needed. Mm -hmm. We know that we have to keep kind of continuing the upgrades, features, and so on. But how is it implemented? What issues do we see here? Uh, yes. Well, in this uh, open run environment um, that we have several vendors, uh, they all provide different software releases. And it is a challenge for us to create a CDCT model that ensures the interoperability between all the those releases. So here is important the role of the system integrator, no, to to bring in uh, together uh, the, together the, the, all the software vendor uh, releases into one unique package, and uh, ensures the, the the integration between all these these releases, and even it is responsible for to make sure that this uh, specific new package introduce uh, important changes into into the network no like a new functionality or mm -hmm. or some kind of uh, patch to fix uh, vulnerabilities so we as operators we have to make sure that this is implemented and vendors have to test as many times as possible to uh, to make sure that this is uh, working on uh, even if they have the the testing or the interval in between stages um, already automated um, so that's why we consider the CI/CD CT pipeline is essential for this uh, open run environment, no? to ensure the, the the development, the deployment, and the maintenance of those components. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some actions that we can take in, in implement the culture of continuing testing during the development cycle, not just at the end, or even to invest in test automation to accelerate the, the testing processes. No, these are some ways to reduce the overall testing interval. And of course, and I think that this is one of the most important, is the collaboration and cooperation between vendors and, and, and operators, no? to reduce the, the, the redundant testing efforts and, and focus on efficiency to, well, as the key to, to succeed in this, in this complex environment. Yeah, understood. And maybe Atusa, you can comment too. I think this is a topic that you have been also exploring in terms of implementing. Yeah, exactly, and I actually I, I fully agree with what has been said uh, regarding multi-vendor aspects and, and different releases that would be provided and uh, the importance of a uh, system integration that um, and, and, and the need for synchronization between all of the different parties, uh, CU, DU, uh, RU vendors, third-party SMO, and also operator to, to be able to put in place um, uh, the right CI-CD chain. I would also like to mention that um, in, I mean we, we also face some other issues because we um, actually we developed our own CI/CD chain um, uh, in, uh, for some of our uh, projects and on Open RAN, and we face uh, several challenges. Even if we see that in Open RAN, um, let's say some frameworks based on GitOps is, uh, is now common, it's, it's the baseline, uh, but still, uh, uh, depending on I mean, uh, depending on the vendors, there's still some manual efforts that needs to be done to adapt uh, 
uh, the, the full, uh, let's say, CICD chain from uh, one environment to another. So these are things that need to be enhanced in the future uh, to be able to have a, a, CD, a CICD chain that is fully automated. Understood. So I don't know how we are doing on time, but I have one interesting question for all of them. We Okay, so good. So we can start with Matty. What is your forward-looking view now for this particular area? What do you see from AT&T perspective as well on how it is going to be actually implemented, executed, and supported going forward? Uh, well, I'm, I'm very bullish on the SMO. I'm, I'm, I'm the near, near real-time guy, so I'm still optimistic about the near real-time as well. But like I said, there's very natural path for SMO to be mm -hmm. deployed and, uh, and basically start porting the old SON apps onto this platform and then take advantage of the new opportunities with the new capabilities. So, so I'm, I'm very optimistic about SMO for sure. Glad to hear that. And let's just see it to uh, Yeah, I'm um, actually as uh, similar <laughs> as what has been said. I'm optimistic, particularly at least for some of the func functionalities of, of SMO, such as lifecycle management, CIC, better CICD, uh, non-real-time rake evolution, uh, and uh, and also multi-domain SMO. I'm mm -hmm. I'm quite op optimistic, and I that, and I think that we will we will get there. Uh, maybe some other evolutions, particularly when we are moving towards more near real time, would be longer term. Uh, but um, uh, compared to the to the SMO as as a, a initial target of SMO, and I think that. Um, in any case, uh, work of uh, our analyze and tip would be key to uh, to define a common a framework for um, for the evolution towards SMO, full uh, full SMO. Thank you. Um, well, we consider that we as operators we need to um, adapt to the not only to the evolving market and customer needs, but also to the societal ones, and that's why we consider the the orchestration and automation are keys for for this uh, to respond to this demand. The customer requests more and more um, reliable, reliable uh, networks, so we need to um, ensure the, the, the service availability and minimize the disruptions. Or even the customer demands a high quality user experience, so we need to use the capabilities like auto healing, as I said before, or even the automation to, uh, to achieve these this customer expectations. And from the point of view of the uh, societal one, uh, we in Vodafone, are, I think that for all the different uh, companies, it is really important the energy efficiency and environmentally sustainable network management. Uh, this is a priority. So again, we can use automation or different capabilities to uh, achieve this, uh, well, to, to optimize the resource utilization and, and reduce the, the energy consumption. Yeah, that's important too. Okay. And for if you want, I can, yes. I can close. I, I am also optimistic, very optimistic too. Uh, I, I think one of the words, words we have heard during this uh, event has been collaboration. So I, I think we are all convinced that collaboration is a must and mm -hmm. to, to push this and, um, and we are doing it. Uh, so it's not uh, just a word, it's, right. it's something we are already doing. Uh, in, in open run and uh, probably you have heard also in the news two weeks ago Telefonica has, has signed all with uh, other 30 companies, uh, telco and tech companies, the autonomous uh, network manifesto that uh, TM4 launch uh, and in, in that uh, at that moment we have the compromise to accelerate the automation as much as possible. Uh, the automation uh, network framework, uh, the automation network architecture, and the way to measure the level of uh, autonomy and automation, uh, I think the compromise is to achieve in 2025. So I mean, it's two years now. <laughs> we don't have too much time. Uh, if you know the, the scale of the TM4, uh, we are supposed to be in level four of automation. So it's quite ambitious. Mm -hmm. So I'm optimistic, and it's mandatory for <laughs> for many of us to be there. So I think it will work very, very soon. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. So there we have it. Keywords I'm taking is collaboration. That's happening in the Roma subgroup. If you're not tuned in, do follow and bring in your input as well. I hear accelerate the work. So yes, accelerate it. And then what else? 2025 is the timeline. 
yes, let's go and get it done by then. Thank you, everyone, and thank you to our panelists. Thank you. Thank you for all of the panelists and uh, for the moderator. That was a great panel, um, great insights. Um, we'll move to the uh, last panel, which is the uh, overcoming challenges through CDCT and CI. So may I ask Patrick Lopez, who's the moderator and the panelists to uh, come here to the stage. Wow, you guys are courageous. Congratulations, you made it so far. Let's, let's see if we can put you to bed. Okay. Do we have enough seats? Yes. Yeah? yeah? Great, starts well. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So this uh, last panel, uh, we've heard about uh, those challenges from uh, the operator's perspective in the previous uh, panel. And here we're going to hear from vendors and integrators um, about basically um, how to solve those uh, challenges. So we're talking about uh, how to use uh, pipelines, CI, CD, CT, uh, in order to implement um, full-scale uh, automation uh, in the RAN. And um, I guess the first uh, I won't start with a question. I will ask each of the panelists to introduce themselves uh, briefly, and then uh, I'll go with the first question. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good evening all, and uh, nice to see all of you here. Uh, it's the last session, but I'm hoping I will make it interesting. So we have colorful panels. panelists. We'll, we'll share our insights too, so looking forward. My name is Robin George. Um, as part of Amdocs, um, I work on uh, the uh, mobile services division, which is mainly focusing on to open RAN and VRAN and 5G initiatives. Uh, in addition to that, we work on various automation frameworks uh, into the 5G side too. Um, so being a, you know, uh, you know, one of the sessions, it, it was heard like, you, one of the key things which you need is having a network expertise as well as a software knowledge, right? So that is what we bring into the team of Mixture and being a system integrator with a software solutions provider is what we offer to the industry. And glad to be here with all the panelists. Thanks, Robin. Anna? Good afternoon, or actually, I should actually say good evening, everybody. <laughs> My name is Anna Zakrzewska. I'm a senior principal engineer within our telecom systems engineering team at Dell Technologies. I lead our engagement within Oran Alliance with a focus on Workgroup 6. Uh, within the cloudification and orchestration space, which is the, 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 the perspective I'd like to bring to this panel tonight. Uh, it's a privilege, actually, to be speaking at the end. Uh, why? Because we've had three fantastic days of excellent discussions and input, and we can make uh, references to those. So looking forward to this discussion, hopefully we'll be able to contribute with some new insights as well. Yeah, and uh, we can even like stay longer, and Abdel <laughs> won't even be mad. Can stay until seven or eight if we want. <laughs> Sorry. Please yeah. go ahead. So hello, uh, my name is uh, Ramon Armada. I am pre-sales director uh, in Capgemini, a system integration company that you uh, know. I want to thank you, the audience, to to be here at this late time. Uh, also, especially to the Spanish colleagues, because tomorrow is a bank holiday here. So thank you very much. I'm I'm very happy to to be here and to share uh, our experiences with you. Thank you. Banu? Yeah. yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Banu, and I work for Arna Networks. My primary focus in Arna Networks is on the RAN vertical and also the ORAN part. So happy to be here. Thank you. Thanks, Banu. And at last, Anu? Good evening <laughs> and good afternoon. And thank you for being here. My name is Hanin Garcia, uh, Global Telco Solutions Manager for Red Hat. And I, as well as I cover uh, many of the operators across the world. I do, I, I'm part as well of community. I do work in Oran as well on the, on the Linux Foundation and working on other projects out there. So sometimes you see me in front and sometimes, as most of the time, I am behind the scenes as well. Thank you. Well, let's get started. Um, so I guess we, we've seen it during those three days. Uh, Open RAN is progressing and there's still work to do. Uh, but one of the key differentiators for Open RAN 
particularly in the run intelligence space, is to be able to provide um, the capacity to orchestrate and to manage in a true multi-vendor environment. And in order to do that, um, well, we all know that by order of difficulty, a single vendor implementation in a greenfield environment, I mean, it's probably the easiest, right? You, you can't automate end-to-end uh, -end and uh, you can deploy uh, with uh, very little interaction. Now, doing the same thing with a single vendor in a brownfield is a little bit more complicated. Now, automating a multi-vendor environment in a brownfield operator is probably the most difficult way, the most difficult task that we that we have. So, how can we achieve that? How, what can we do to uh, to overcome that challenge? Who wants to uh, start? I'm not going to uh, point fingers unless you don't answer, and then I'll start. <laughs> yeah, um, let me say my perspective of it. Um, so. One of the key things which I have a takeaway from the three days is, uh, you know, if you have, you have to embrace the change which is coming, right? The, the, the new way of working and uh, automation, automation, automation is what you have to do. Okay? And um, today, as you know, the you know, rest of the, the previous panelists did speak about uh, the expectations, what they have, right? Uh, which means, you know, I, I would need to have an efficient, uh, a scalable sort of a, and a flexible framework uh, with, through which I can ensure that whatever releases which I am doing uh, meets my requirement, right? So the, the key aspect which I wanted to say over here is that, you know, with a multi-vendor environment comes a challenge of interoperability. You will have to package it in a way, yeah, and standards, as you know, are still in the process of being developed. So you have a challenge across the standards too. Yeah? So. So this is where you know uh, having a concept of uh, uh, having a more flexible and having a scalable, and then when you want to deliver into a system, you also have to think it's a brownfield, which means you have to have a way of integrating to their systems too, right? Uh, to to some of their element management systems or the performance systems, so that they get the view not just of the current system but also of an existing system. So that is the way we think is the way to go, and uh, automation can help uh, with these uh, ways only. No order here, but uh, I'll jump in, <laughs> it seems so. I think there are several challenges. We've been on that journey before with uh, multi-vendor SON, with small cells, so Wi-Fi access points where we had to find a way to communicate and to find a common language. And the common language is the stand where, where standards come into play. So we are still developing the standards, the, inter the open interfaces, but also the KPIs. So if we talk about performance automation, we need to understand the metrics that are exposed by the, by the network, by the network elements. That is one of the crucial steps uh, overall. From a grand automation perspective, we also need to ensure, ensure reliability, scale, because we can automate maybe in the labs today, we can learn from those, and these are very valuable learning, but we need to bring it out to the field and, and talk about thousands of base stations, thousands of sites, and millions of users worldwide that expect uh, ultra-reliable services um, on their end. Uh, what we also need to keep in mind is how do we do it uh, in, a, in a secure way. So security comes into play in multi-vendor environment. Uh, we, earlier this week, I think we talked about trust and we trust each other as partners. However, when we speak about deployments, we, we, offer, uh, we often refer to a zero trust policies in that regard, but that is to speed up the, the automation process. Uh, there is four more voices here to, uh, to, to express. I'll just uh, leave one term within the zero touch provisioning. We often refer here to, to Oran, Oran architecture, OCloud is born where the IMS services are there. However, there is so much work to be done before those come into play. How do we efficiently automate provisioning such that we, we rack and stack, we provide uh, the network cable, the, the power cable, we press the button and the magic happens in an automatic way. Thanks, Anna. Yeah, so when, when we are uh, trying uh, to embrace uh, the challenge that Patrick has uh, stated. So uh, bringing the automation in, in a brownfield, complicated uh, thing, uh, for sure my view is uh, divide and conquer. So uh, when we are uh, discussing about 
uh, automating an all-run, all let's say, greenfield uh, environment where uh, we need to deploy automatically the CU, the DU, the third-party SMOs, and, and so on, uh, there is a challenge inside. So, okay, let's start by this. Let's build our uh, CI, CD, CT pipelines uh, that are uh, reliable, that uh, you can uh, perform a rollback if it fails at any point in time. And then, okay, let's take uh, the other pieces of the network, let's take uh, the other elements and, and bring the automation uh, for that for that pieces. But we need to start for the, from the beginning. Thank you. Um, Feel free if you want to comment or add on. You want to comment? Yeah, sure. So, so uh, especially in the multi-vendor environment, right? So we see a challenges mainly in terms of the integration. So though the interfaces are very clear, the standards are clear, but multiple vendors comes together, so it's not like everything will work. So mm -hmm. there'll be certain gaps. The gaps might be in the specs, and the might be in the data models, and the version mismatch. Within the spec itself, there are various versions. And nowadays, if you see, every six months, uh, Oran releases a new version. So if there is any change, then it'll be an issue. And also the vendor side, they have to maintain the backward compatibility. Yeah. So that will be another challenge. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did a little bit of multi-vendor integration uh, in Open RAN in a previous life. Uh, and I guess, I mean, like the intro probability, that's the level zero. That's the day zero, right? Uh, just making sure that you don't have those gaps and uh, that the elements can talk together, right? But like the, the difficulty comes when uh, beyond pure functional uh, capability, you start uh, digging into uh, performance uh, and you're trying to have a multi-vendor system that can perform end-to-end -end as well or, or better <laughs> ideally uh, than uh, a single vendor solution. Uh, how do you how do you guys look at that uh, problem? Uh, is that the responsibility of the uh, system integrator to, to do that or how do individual vendor can contribute to these aspects? You're looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> You're the the one that <laughs> Sorry. Well, well, before I go to that question, I just uh, wanted to give a, a, a little extra on the previous question that was regarding the uh, when you're saying that uh, automation is the is the final differentiator, right? Uh, well, I, I might disagree on that. So Good. Because we are in a panel, let's discuss about it now. But um, joke aside. Uh, basically, uh, there is one thing that we need to understand when we're talking about automation uh, is programmability, mm -hmm. okay? There is no th things that can be automated. This, the thing that need to be automated can be programmable, okay? And most of the time what we're talking, especially on ORAN, there is one thing. Uh, I will not talk about the legacy, but I will talk about the new generation of, of uh, solutions that are coming into the mm -hmm. market, the, especially about the new infrastructure and how programmable that infrastructure is. And this is one of the challenges as well that need to be overcome. Um, we are seeing that, and, and, and when I say that is, there are many knobs to turn and many buttons to push on that infrastructure to actually deliver what is needed so the automation can be realized. Um, so one of the questions that's come ahead is, okay, and because we are uh, talking about disaggregated networks and and we are now even going further into bringing multi-vendors into the disaggregating world, well, things get even more complicated, right? And we live in an in a, in a era where uh, that programmability on the infrastructure brings a lot of flexibility. And now you have actually the delivery life cycle of, of those components that are going to be living on that infrastructure are going to come even more frequently. And I think uh, on the previous panel, I think that was one of the one of the things, right? One of the challenges and, and how we address that. Um, well, automation certainly will help on that. Um, and especially when we're talking about oper interoperability, how we can actually put those things together. I think it was Veronica before that, uh, that mentioned about it and, and she already gave a, a hint into there is more work that needs to be done uh, between us, the partners, but not only us as the vendors, but as well together with the, with, the, uh, with the operators to actually achieve this kind of interoperability and the automation of that interoperability and even to get to that vision of CICD or CT. Yeah. What you see uh, in reality today is 
Uh, there is many operators, so some operators are already trying, okay? But you, what you see and you go downstairs into what the engineer and how engineers are doing it, mm -hmm. they are doing it still in the old ways. They are doing manual testing. Yeah, yeah, and we're going to come to that. Sorry to interrupt you, but uh, yeah. th that's one point uh, we're going to bring up uh, uh, a little later. So uh, um, I, I don't want you to steal all the thunder, otherwise <laughs> Abdel will, won't be happy. It's, it's the last panel, so it's okay. Surely the panel was finished. <laughs> um, uh, but on the previous question, like anyone wants to answer? Yeah. I, I'll take it up. I mean, I, I do understand that, uh, in a, uh, you know, I think we had a hint from Veronica about saying that, you know, it's a multi-vendor, so it's not just the, I mean, it's not just an integrator. Integrator needs to work with a different group of vendors, uh, define some sort of a, you know, what, what we call it as uh, roles and responsibilities and what is expectations, mm -hmm. right? So then the, the, the concept of a platform using an automation will come into play, right? Otherwise, if A develops in another fashion uh, and do my automation, it's going to break, right? So you, if you want to have a unified and a scalable sort of a thing, yeah. this needs to work. Yes, integration, system integrator has a role to play. And um, having um, a knowledge on the network, having a knowledge on the cloud, because this is what we see that- It's a lot of it's different, different domains, Different domains right? which we need to- Exactly. You know? And partnership is the way to go, right? And nobody is an expert. There is no one size which fits all. You need to, you need to learn, you need to uh, have a partnership in play and embrace their knowledge and then build together. Uh, yeah. And that is what I think at the end, we want to give to the uh, CSPs, mm -hmm. the best of the breed, so that they can expand, right? Yeah. So that's what the thought is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, there's best of breed, but there also there's like fit for purpose, right? Uh, at, the, at the end of the day, you have to select the right partner in the right domain yeah. for the specific task that yeah. you have at hand, right? Um, the, I guess, so if we're talking about CI, CD, CT, um, building pipeline for automation in a single vendor environment is one thing, right? And in a multi-vendor environment, uh, as we mentioned, it's even more complicated, right? And it's complicated for day zero to put the infrastructure in place and to make it work, right? But once you go to day one and after, when you have to actually manage those vendors and uh, uh, have uh, lifecycle management uh, in place, that, that becomes really complex, right? So I guess the question is how can we use CI, CD, CT um, in a multi-vendor environment uh, for lifecycle management? So I guess that, uh, and also uh, linking to your previous question, Patrick, uh, and, and also the previous panel, this is about collaboration. Uh, this is something that cannot be achieved. Okay, I am Mr. Operator X, I want to take this vendor and this vendor, and I will take this system integrator, and, and let's uh, put it uh, there. Okay, then nobody's benefiting from, from that. Okay, so uh, we need to find the way uh, where uh, there are some uh, central labs, some certification uh, entities, uh, in which, uh, and, and to build a business model in which uh, everybody wins. So the vendor is interested in getting this certification because when they certify the interoperability among different vendors, they will have more challenge to be selected by the operator. And, and, and this is the way I see it. Just to build on that a little bit, uh, and maybe you had a chance to visit our booth here at, at Fuse. Um, we uh, opened two labs, two auto labs, open telecom ecosystem labs, one in Round, Round Rock in the US last year. And just several months ago in May, we, have, uh, op we opened the EMEA lab in Ireland. Uh, ba it's based in Cork. And this is exactly what we're doing over there. We invite our partners, we invite the operators, we invite everybody. So if you haven't got invited by any of my colleagues yet, please feel invited to join us on that effort because this is precisely where we do the testing, when we, where we learn. And I think this is another aspect that I want to share. Uh, we have the CICD pipeline built into the, uh, the hotel uh, integration platform. But I what I want to highlight is that we also share the learning, learnings from those, from, from th those uh, individual journeys. And actually, uh, there are several of them. And we contribute it back to the community. So many of the contributions that we bring to Oran Alliance are actually based on the learnings and information and uh, observations from our hotel uh, collaboration uh, uh, projects. And these are extremely important because they go beyond our uh, technical, theoretical assumptions. This is something that we learned, that we validated in the lab. 
lab that we agreed, observed with the partners as uh, the best way to go, hence the proposal to the community as a contribution to, to Warren Alliance specifications. A and you published those results, yeah. And we published, uh, we, p we also published those, those results. So really, uh, I encourage you to, to join the effort. Uh, please feel free to reach out after the session. My colleagues are also here wearing the blue t-shirts and we'll be happy to provide more information. So I, I, I will take the, I will hear, wear my community hat now. <laughs> is it red hat? The, <laughs> no, the community hat, I say. Uh, then I will take the red one. So um, is, is, is important because um, there is already, you know, Plogfest happening that allows of previous, and I know the specifications are ongoing and everybody knows that. So is, is some, somehow we are prematurely testing and in trying to see if things work, where things break as well on the community, and, and I invite, please, uh, the operators as well as other partners to be part of those block fests. Uh, that is important, and that are being organized by the TIP and, and, and no run Alliance um, as a part of a community effort. Um, now I put my, my red hat. Um, so we, we are working as well uh, with partners, uh, all of them here, uh, and some of them in, in, in the audience, uh, into how we can as well enable interoperability uh, from the platform itself. And we actually have a program, uh, internal program, that we are now exposing to some of the partners out there, and we are inviting operators to work with us and, uh, as well into a co-creation environment, especially on the, on the near real-time rig, and now we're looking as well at the non-real-time part on the SMO as well. Thank you. Um, for the next question, uh, I'm going to blame uh, Renuka because we had very good questions and she stole like many of them for the previous panel, so it's a repeat question. But it bears repeating because the answer will be different, I think, uh, uh, from uh, the network operators that were here. So uh, it's about the role of AIML in uh, network automation. Uh, it, how do you see AIML playing a role in automation in those uh, complex environments? You want me to take? Oh, oh. maybe Bano. No, you want to? Yeah. Sorry. Okay. So I guess uh, that it is not uh, AIML playing a role on the automation itself. It is AIML playing a role in the ORAN ecosystem. So the uh, uh, they have been mentioned uh, in in the previous panel. So everything that that has related with the R apps, uh, X apps, and 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 so on. Uh, is where uh, artificial intelligence is uh, making its magic. One challenge uh, that M Mati has mentioned in the previous panel is, is okay, uh, we will have this traffic stream uh, app, we will have this energy efficiency app, we will have uh, this Q or quality of experience app. Okay, will they work together fine? Uh, will because uh, obviously the ecosystem that we are trying to to bring is a multi-vendor ecosystem where third parties are bringing their apps. So it is uh, a, a quite challenging and a very beautiful uh, moment that we are living here uh, to see all, all all this stuff. For sure, uh, and I think well, I'm not a panelist, but let's uh, I'll be a panelist for a second. Um, uh, you have a lot, and we will see a lot of AIML in the apps themselves and in the RIC uh, themselves. Um, but I guess, is there not a role in the CICD CT where I, it feels that maybe it would be a missed opportunity if we couldn't collect the data related to the integration and the testing and actually make the testing self learning, you know? Yeah, in, indeed. I'm, what I want—I was thinking on this, you know, on the similar line on the testing, right? So testing, continuous testing will play an important role. Think about a predictive sort of a testing that you did one sort of a testing or an adaptive sort of a testing where you did a testing, it found a scenario. In the next test, it tries to adapt itself, right? All this can be achieved only through an AI. I mean, now we have generative AI coming in. Yeah. So all this. You know, and, and then uh, to answer, like operationalization is also a key aspect, right? There are many areas within operational, when you deploy it, how do you use this AIML in a way that that can be efficiency for your operations too, that can be added. Yes. Yeah. So there is, it, it, it's a, it's like what, like, like in one of the panels, I said, what you cannot do out of AIML is a question now, right? There are, it, it's opens and, uh, you know, sea of possibilities. It's just that we have to define use case uh, basis and then take it up and then, Roll it out. Yeah, I think I, it's it's a it's now we are in era where it's all opportunity, 
and uh, AIML is there to help us. Uh, and the other day I was hearing the word called uh, siliconism, uh, mm -hmm. where technology is coming to a world where humans have to embrace it, right? Yeah. It's a digital world. So, so I believe we are there, we are going there, and I think it's, it's a nice era. We all have to collaborate and work yeah, together. I, I, I think I, I agree with you guys, and especially on, uh, with, with Patrick, what you're saying. Most of the time we're thinking AIML on ORAN, we're immediately going to the X app and the R app. Yes. But there is many other things that need to be done, <laughs> yeah. uh, including the programmability of the platform I itself. Um, and, and, and this is where uh, things uh, coming from the community, and, and I will say that there is a still a challenge there, but I will come to that. Um, what I wanted to say is that there is possibilities right now that because the technology is available now on, ge on ge generative AI to actually help us understanding what are the conditions on the network from the test data and actually even generate automatically all those test sets. Yep. So all of this is possible today with, with the tools we have now. And, and, and we have partners in here that can help <laughs> if you want to see how that works. Now there is one little challenge uh, when it comes to AI is the data itself. Uh, and this is what is difficult. Uh, because what is difficult is because most of the data is today uh, on, on the property of the operators and not freely available to actually vendors outside that, that network. Uh, and that is kind of a cripple a little bit the possibilities of what we can achieve together. So somehow we need to find a way that uh, that data can be shared, can be exposed. So as vendor, we can actually help and build and train models that can help on the different challenge that they're going to face on the open brand. Just to also add to that a little bit, as the previous discussion was very much SMO-centric, and we perceive the SMO and the RICS as the brains of the system. Uh, however, the intelligence within the system can lie also elsewhere, being the O-Cloud itself, uh, being the IMS itself. Within the Workgroup 6, we also have uh, several discussions regarding how do we map faults to alarms. If we were to expose all the faults of all the resources to the, SM for the, to the SMO, it's possible for the SMO to take a decision that might not be sustainable, that might not be scalable. So we do acknowledge that uh, a certain level of intelligence will be lying in the O-Cloud. We haven't determined yet how the AMS will do the mapping. There might be correlated faults. Uh, raised by similar types of resources that would be then uh, raised towards the SMO as a single alarm. So let's uh, also acknowledge the fact that there is a higher, higher applicability of this approaches uh, elsewhere in the network and uh, essentially nearly in any component. And I believe any vendor providing uh, a component to the entire system will lever le leverage those as well. Yeah, thank you. One SMO to rule them all. <laughs> Um, sorry, <laughs> later. Huh? We, we call uh, that we call that the. You use that with the mano <laughs> as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and in darkness, bind them. Um, we still have time. Okay, we still have time. Right, that's cool. Um, all right. So we all here invited by um, the telecom telecom infra project. Um, I, I think we've seen tip growing over time and changing as well. Uh, how 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 do we see tip continuing to basically help in that respect in that domain specifically? How do we see tip um, influencing um, the O cloud, the SMO, um, the ORAN, um, and continuing to bring value when it comes to uh, uh, automation uh, and when it comes to multi-vendor integration. Yeah, maybe I'll start, uh, and then we'll all add the point. So, uh, um, uh, our belief is, you know, uh, TIP as a foundation has really worked well, bringing various. It's not just the partners, but also various CSPs across on board, providing a, you know, uh, you know, the technical specifications which they build out is something. You know, we want, uh, uh, as an integrator, we also want to see what are the requirements which all the MNOs give. Uh, rather than building, you know, one-off, can we build something so that it can be deployed, do it once, but deployed many times, right? So so this, I think, the, rec the gathering of the requirement, uh, talking to the various CSPs and say, you know what, these are the consolidated list. It also helps us yeah. to understand this is where the industry, this is where we want to have a, you, you could call more of an MVP, right? Which yes. we want to go to. That's where I think in an agile world we want to go to. 
So this helps us a lot. And uh, you know, the fostering the innovation, bringing all the peoples together is the key. Those are the two key things, takeaways, which I feel TIP is doing, and I think they should continue doing it. And we really appreciate that. So. We we'll definitely echo that. Keep bring is bring us uh, together in this forum in in, in similar forums. Uh, sometimes uh, we may have a sensation that uh, the standard is not mature yet. Therefore, we're waiting for it to mature. There's no time to wait. So thankfully, uh, there are initiatives uh, facilitated by by TIP that help us come together and uh, and move forward while the standard keeps maturing concurrently. Sure. Yeah, TIP is give, basically is giving a platform to come all the vendors to come together and do all the interoperability testing. And if there is any gaps are identified, that that will be known during the testing. And uh, the thing is, like, what are the gaps which are identified? Some are probably that inputs they can give it to the RAND standards. Probably they can in take that as an input and incorporate in the next set of standards. And also, in my opinion, yeah, there are so many vendors outside, so probably TIP should convince or encourage so are the more vendors to join. So, yeah, that will, so that so many players will come in and do their testing. And, uh, well, I will have to thank TIP, and I agree with Anna for bringing us together, and uh, sharing experience, sharing knowledge. Uh, it has been a, a, a wonderful three days here. Yep in Madrid, uh, a, a little bit warm now, but, uh, <laughs> um, and, and one thing is, uh, uh, and we have to thank them to being that catalyst into, not only on the, on the, on the run acts, I know we are in a, in, in a more open run uh, kind of uh, panel now, but uh, as well on the fixed side and all, everything else that they are doing uh, to putting, uh, to being the catalyst for, for, the, for the whole ecosystem, bringing vendors and operators together into, into and facilitating those, uh, those conversations and those standards as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think, um, well, as I was mentioning this morning and earlier today, um, when I f first presented the premises of Open RAN was 2017, it was six years ago. Like in six years, we went from like slides really uh, to uh, trials, pilots, commercial deployments at scale, and now we're talking about you know automation and AI ML. Uh, I don't think that we've seen a technology emerge so fast in telecom uh, and reach that level of maturity so fast. I mean, we're all obviously eager to see <laughs> things move faster and it, they can always move faster but it feels like um, when we take a second and look back uh, tip has played a pivotal role in that so um, we're going to close on that thanks a lot thanks for everything Abdel and it's up to you now thank you thank you uh, Patrick and thank you for all of the uh, panelists I know it's uh, kind of the end of the uh, of the day, um, uh, and I personally kind of coming up to uh, the saturation level. So um, I would just ask um, uh, Raoul Simon to uh, he will be giving us um, some overview on the Roma subgroup on the some of the testings that is being prepared at the moment um, and planned for for execution. So uh, please make it light, Raoul, and uh, and yeah, um, come to the stage. Well, thank you very much. This is Raúl Barranquero from, from Telefónica. And um, yeah, uh, we will start this session uh, talking about the, this uh, phase two uh, program, uh, which is more close to automation, okay? Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well. Uh, yeah, the idea is to talk about uh, this Roma phase two testing approach. Okay, we, we identify necessities and the idea is to prepare one lab, one uh, things in order that we can uh, resolve our problems. Okay, uh, next point that we, we will introduce is uh, Veronica, we, we will talk uh, about uh, one overview of Roma <laughs> subgroup, okay? And the third point is we will talk 
there we'll talk about the <laughs> sorry a little nervous the key uh, learnings regarding the this uh, Roma group okay um, yeah let's go uh, well this uh, Roma phase two testing uh, we consider as OV as Telefonica we consider um, CDCT as main enabler okay for automations okay we get this uh, conclusions because I comes from my team and we see that uh, during years if we automatize the life cycle of the of the of our microservices etc we have seen that is for us is um, we are more agile okay and um, we want to apply this this uh, this lesson learned to uh, 5d code okay um, well, um, we see in Brazil and, B and in vivo that um, um, these lesson learns are very good for us, okay? Because we see that continuous testing and continuous deployment <coughs> help us a lot of in reduce the, um, the timeline, okay? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, as operators, okay, we, co we, we consider that this is the way, okay? CDCT is one enabler that allows us to have efficiencies, okay? The sowarization is a process that is very relevant in RAN, and I think we think that CDCT will help us to bring this to this journey, okay? So the point is that we should collaborate and generate one ecosystem, one architecture, which allows us to um, create one ecosystem that allow us to um, create uh, synergies, okay? So Telefonica is preparing one lab, okay, um, uh, under Tip Roma, uh, and we have here two phases, phase two and phase three. In phase two, we will work using CUDU deployment, okay? We will try to automatize these points using uh, SOL 005 and SMO, okay? And in phase three, we will put focus on the infrastructure, okay? We have seen that the infrastructure is a key part, okay? For, for uh, in order that the workload works fine, we should put focus in this part because we have a lot of configuration that should be done automatically, okay? And um, this is a, <laughs> it's a problem, okay? that we have resolved uh, automatizing things like SRIOB, PTP in our labs, okay? And yeah, let's go to the next point. I will explain more or less the, uh, the, the idea is to have, uh, at Southbound, we have the infrastructure, Kubernetes cluster, sorry. And um, the idea is to automatize the provisioning of this Kubernetes cluster to automatize all the infrastructure layers, CPU pinning, SRIOB, because there are a lot of things that are done manually, and if it's done manually, we can make errors, okay? So with continuous, de continuous deployment and continuous testing, for us is very, very powerful way to, uh, to achieve these things, okay? Um, over that, we have the SMO, okay? And at uh, 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 upper layer, we have CDCT platform with which orchestrate everything, okay? Or everything, let's say. In this moment, in our lab, we will prepare uh, one interface, which is the CDCT, between CDCT, sorry, and SOL005, okay? Um, in that point, uh, our idea is to um, reduce, um, to have an, a standard way to uh, perform continuous deployment, continuous testing, okay, um, using one standard uh, interface, which is uh, SOL005, okay. Uh, with that, we have, we, we think that we can resolve one important point, which is the uh, sowarization, the sowarization, okay, the scale, because no, the, in open run, we have a lot of place to upgrade the software life cycle is very complex, so uh, for us is one important thing 
to have this CDCD platform, okay? In our office, we have been selling this regarding this, this, uh, this architecture, okay? Because the organization should be adapted to this, okay? We should be very, uh, it's not easy, the firewalls takes time to upgrade and yeah. Um, we, should, we should resolve that challenges, okay? And yeah, the, the point is here to put focus on this architecture and to be more agile, okay? We have tested this in IT, in uh, core, G, core network function, okay? And we are very happy with this. We have got good K KPIs, okay? And we have um, promoting this to run, okay? The lesson learned that we have in 5G core, move it to run, okay? Because everything is software. Sorry, I'm a little, <laughs> uh, well, so, Next, uh, Veronica, if you want. Thank you. We are doing more dynamically, so we are both together. Okay. Uh, well, this is just the summary of the sorry of the Roma session, uh, and well, this is just a summary. You can see here what is the the approach for automation in general. Okay. For automation. Se me oye? Ah, sí. For automation in, in general, we cover all the full life cycle management of the network functions jointly uh, with, uh, with the continuous deployment, continuous testing as part of the processes that we were saying before. Okay? It's, we talk about planning, testing, deployment, operation, optimization, and decommissioning. And in, in, in Tipe Roma's group, focus on the open run domain, not for sure, not all the network. Okay? So, next one. Okay, so we are aware of the industry challenges and uh, we are working on different work streams with the aim of, um, of uh, um, solving this, these challenges with orchestration and, and automation. The first one is the CI, CD and automation for open, run and on cloud with the aim of reduce the internal uh, deploy and testing time. We are working in the service-based management architecture, the SBMA. Uh, we are moving to this specific framework uh, with the objective of that the different ROMA elements can be consumed uh, independently of each other. The RANSAP net slash management it is only of the work stream we are working on because we consider that this is the moment to start um, thinking in the integration with those slicing capabilities and start uh, supporting the use cases uh, in the these use cases in the in the in a common infrastructure machine learning for operations because we are thinking on uh, adding these specific uh, algorithms in 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 the productions and later with the aim of maintaining this and even monitoring and finally our work, we are working on a new uh, platform requirements more focused on the inventory management and data analytics Okay, uh, here you can see more or less what Veronica has just told us, all the, all the items we have been doing this year or we are doing, okay? This is the, the roadmap. Uh, in the first line, you can see uh, what we have been doing. Uh, for example, uh, we were working in the, a new release of the requirements for the SMO and we get some vendors badging for for Roma requirements for some use cases, okay? And you can see continuing in the Q4 of this year, uh, well, we have been working before on the phase two uh, test that Raul has already explained us, and we expect to put it, uh, to go on with that and put it in our lab in Telefonica and get some results and produce a, a white paper, okay? And uh, as uh, Veronica was telling us about the service-based management architecture and network slicing, um, uh, we were we had that in mind, I think, from the last year. But we it was not the, the right moment, so that's why we are working now this year. It's more mature in in the Oran Alliance as well. So as we are organized the working, uh, there will be three work streams: the work stream one covering the scope, principles, and industry maturity evaluation, uh, ending more or less this year, and we will uh, start next year with the work stream two, the MVP architecture and requirements, and uh, continue with the work stream three, API and data model requirements. That will be our plan for, for the GNS1, okay? And, okay. Uh, okay, so 
we uh, one of the main challenges in the Roma subgroup is the complexity of moving the run workloads uh, to containerize and virtualize uh, platforms. We uh, highlight the importance of the orchestration and automation because we consider these tools not only um, necessary but also essential no, to, to manage the complexity in this, in this environment. Uh, so the orchestration and automation is a phase journey uh, the, well, based in, in operational requirements and organizational and industry uh, readiness. Uh, the first phase is to achieve the operational efficiency, and this is uh, followed by the aim of uh, giving the network the, the agility to scale and adapt with uh, automated processes into more complex workflows. And finally, uh, add intelligence, in that case, to IML algorithms to achieve a fully autonomous network uh, that responds dynamically to the, well, to the services and, and network requirements. Um, the different prioritized use cases and deployment scenarios, they are also defined and they are collected with the, well, the rest of the requirements in all our TIP Roma documentation. Okay, and from the vendors and the system integrators perspective, because uh, as we have said, uh, TIP Roma is a collaborative project, it's not only about operators, okay? So uh, what we, the feedback we get is that uh, it is necessary to continue and accelerating the the industry alignment, the, the standardization, okay, uh, efforts in, in specification and interfaces. Uh, it's also important because, as I said, we have been working in, in requirements. Uh, well, Veronica and I, we are in the G5 MOU, MOU team and, and we produce requir requirements there. We bring them here into the Tip Roma. But it's true that uh, we need to, to find a right balance between uh, the ambiguity that we maybe put in some uh, requirements trying to be uh, to be open to innovative and to to leave room for innovation and it's not is is too to back not too clear to to produce a uh, testability and certification it's not easy to te to test and certify something that is very open okay very wide in in the definition that's the another point and well, what we say here, the Tip Roma subgroup is uh, by the community and for the community. So uh, we really invite and encourage you to participate, to, to work with us. And well, Team Mobile is another <laughs> of the technical co-leaders, but we are, we are willing to, to work with all of you if possible, okay? Yes, exactly. I think that maybe this is one of the most important slides, so please wake up because we need you <laughs> the call for actions. Uh, for the operators, uh, well, we need your collaboration to join the Roma's leaders in team. The idea is to work together to uh, know your priority, your requirements to shape together the product roadmap. And we also need the collaboration for the different technology suppliers. Uh, we want to know more about your solution. We want to uh, give you the opportunity to talk in our uh, weekly or big weekly meetings with, with, with vendors where we, uh, where we can see how your solution is able to manage the, this complex multi-vendor environment. And even we want to have this kind of discussions now with, well, to talk about the different services or functionalities that we can uh, we can develop or explore. Um, we're opening leader C positions for vendors, so if you are interested to be part of this amazing subgroup, uh, we are uh, more than happy to, to come with your, with your uh, participation, and for us, uh, you can contact directly Abdel or us, and we will see how you can collaborate with us. And even if you are interested in being part of the phase you testing as um, our college is, is uh, mentioned before, so we are happy to come with, with all of you. So thank you all for, for your attention. Yeah, thank you. And thank hope so to much. see you in our <laughs> meetings. <laughs>